Hi everyone, I'm Aria and I hope you're doing well. I don't normally do tutorials for paid add-ons just because I know not everybody has access to them, but one of my favorite Blender add-ons just added a really cool feature and I saw a few people online wondering how to set it up so I thought I'd create a quick run through. There is a fluid engine built directly into Blender called Mantaflow, but there are some features that it doesn't have that this specific add-on has, so I actually prefer to use this add-on as opposed to Mantaflow when I'm creating my simulations. That add-on is called Flip Fluids, and Flip Fluids is not sponsoring this video, but I really like it, so I just wanted to show you how it's done. If you do download that add-on, you'll get a zip file, and then what you want to do is head into Blender, and you can head up to the top, Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and you just want to click Install. Then you just want to find where you saved your zip file, and click Install. Just make sure that this is turned on. If you do want to get a copy of my setup here, I'm going to make this available on my Patreon. You'll get access to this blend file, as well as tons of other blend files that I've created for my tutorials. Just make sure to reset Blender and we can get started. So I'm going to hit A to select everything and hit delete. Next let's just add a cylinder. We're just going to do a basic setup here so tab to go into edit mode. Hold alt and click this edge to select this loop. Then we're going to hit I to inset. Just drag this in and we want to add a few cuts. Then once we have that we want to head up here and turn on our proportional editing. Then we'll hit G and we can just drag this down. If you scroll up or down on your mouse wheel, you can increase or decrease the influence. And as well, just hit Z so that it's going straight up and down on our Z axis. Then once you have that, you can click. I'm just going to add some subdivisions here just to support our geometry. I'm just going to quickly do this to the bottom as well, so I to inset. And that should be good. Final thing I want to do is just grab all of these vertices and bring them up, so G and Z. Now we can hit tab to go back into object mode and I'm just going to shade smooth. Then over in the modifiers properties we can add a subdivision surface. Now that we've got our bowl we can hit shift A, add an icosphere and I'm just going to bring this up, scale it down as well, bring this over, duplicate this so shift D, then just bring this over to the other side and that should be good. I'm just going to bring these down a bit just so that they're closer to our collision object. I'm going to hit S and I'm going to scale this up by 1.5. Then just bring this up so G, Z, and 1. The final thing that we need to add is a domain object so let's select cube, bring this up and we're going to hit S to scale it and type in 3. I'm just going to line this up with the bottom and scale it a little bit more on the X and Y, so I'm going to hit S to scale, Shift Z, and you can just drag this out just a little bit. Now that we've got our objects, I'm just going to head over to the physics properties. You want to make sure that you're not selecting fluid, you want to select flip fluid for all of your objects. Select flip fluid, then the next thing you'll see is this menu here, so if we click that you'll see all the different options we have. In this case, we want to create a domain object which goes around all of our objects and calculates. Again, this isn't a full tutorial on flip fluids. There's a lot of great ones out there. This is just specifically for the mixing features, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about all these different things, but I am going to set my resolution to around 128. I also use this simulation method, but you can use either or. Next, what we need to do is scroll down Open up the Flip Fluid Surface tab, and this is where all of our mixing settings will be, but you'll see that if we look everywhere here, there's nothing about mixing or anything like that. The reason it's not showing up is because there's one more setting within the add-on that we didn't check off that we need to add. So let's just head back up to Edit and Preferences, type in Flip. Then click this arrow and you'll see that it opens up a few more settings here and if we scroll all the way down, this is a setting that we need to add, so enable developer tools. As soon as I did that on the right of the screen, we immediately get more options. So again, you need to make sure that this is selected on so that we get these new attributes. Then back into the domain settings, there's two options that we need to enable and the first is color attributes which will give each of our inflows the ability to have a different color. 
and of course we want to enable mixing you can play with these settings if you want but this is just a basic tutorial so i'm going to leave them to default and that should be good for now you don't need to have this much resolution in your simulation but if i was to just scroll down here open up the debug settings and turn on the grid you'll see that each one of these squares represents a 3d cube and the main thing is you want to make sure that your inflow objects and your collision objects are larger than those cubes. If I was to go all the way down to 10, you'll see that this of course wouldn't work because we don't have enough resolution to actually calculate this properly. The default is 65, so you can leave it at that. But if you're noticing that when you bake your simulation, nothing is showing up, it's very likely that your resolution is too low. Now that we've got our domain set up, we can add our other objects. So I'm going to select the first icosphere here, click flip. And in this case, we want to add an inflow object just so that our fluid is being added all the time. If we look at the settings, you'll notice that we have this available geometry attributes here. This is where we set our colors. So I'm just going to quickly select a color. It doesn't really matter what color you're picking. There are some limitations here, so if you were to choose something like a red, and if you were to set your other inflow object at blue, the problem that you'll have is you'll end up with a gray color. And this is a bit of a limitation of this add-on, I'm sure it's going to change in the future, but this would work a lot better if you were to use something like green and red or red and yellow, just because you'll get a mix somewhere in between there, like an orange color. Then we can select our second inflow object here and go into flip fluids again. One more time we want to add an inflow object. Then we can leave everything to default except of course our color attribute. Let's set that to something like yellow. Finally we just want to select our bowl here. Add a flip fluid and we're going to select obstacle. I'm going to up the friction here just so that our liquid isn't splashing all over the place. I'm also going to go into the domain settings and under the flip fluid world, I'm just going to also add surface tension, sheeting, and a little bit of viscosity. Keep in mind that adding viscosity will slow down your bake, but I found from my simulation that this worked a little bit better. Next, we can head back up to the top here and what we want to do is bake our simulation. Also, just keep in mind that when you're adding all of these attributes and things like that, you want to make sure that you've done that before you bake. If you do want to change your colors later, you will have to rebake your simulation. So I'm just going to turn on the render view and you'll notice that we don't really have any lights or anything like that. So I'm just going to quickly add an HDRI. So if you go into the world settings and click here, you can click environment texture. If we click open and add an HDRI, you'll see that now we at least have some lighting. I just made the background transparent just so that it's not distracting. Now you'll notice that even though we set our colors, it's not really showing anything here at all. But it's just because there's one more step that we need to do and that's add a material to our surface mesh and reference our attributes. So I'm just going to go up to the left here and just split this window. Then I'm just going to change this to the shader editor and click new. The very final thing that we need to do is just add one note. So we're going to hit search and type in a tribute. We just want to take the color output and add that to the base color. So the very final thing we need to do is actually add in a name here. And the way we reference our attribute is to type in flip underscore and type in color and hit enter. Then as soon as we do that, you'll see that we've got our colors and they're starting to mix. You can of course go through here and change other things like the roughness. I'm just going to leave it like this just because it's easier to see. One more limitation that I do want to show you is I'm just going to reset the bake one more time and this time I'm going to create two colors that are opposite on the color wheel. So I'm going to make this one orange. And I'm going to grab the other one here and make this a blue color. Because these are opposite on the color wheel, once we bake it, it's actually going to average it out somewhere in the middle here. Which of course isn't what we want. It should be more of a green color, but because they're exactly opposite on the color wheel, it's going to end up somewhere in this area. 
Then if I hit play, you'll see that they're mixing and they're sort of creating a color in this sort of range here. So it's just kind of like going across and sort of averaging it out to here. If you take a look at my initial simulation, you'll see that right here. There are some areas where it's not mixing properly and sort of just giving it a grayish color. Which, if you were mixing paint together, is not how that would turn out. So again, it's not perfect yet, but I thought it was really cool that I can now mix simulations within Blender. I'm really excited to see where the development will go, as I'm sure it's only going to get better. I'm going to add both of these files to my Patreon page. If you want to have either of them as example scenes, feel free to sign up and you can grab these, as well as scene files from a bunch of my other tutorials. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you soon. Bye!